into our manufacturing as well as our BPO uh, industry now in Cebu. As a matter of fact, uh, I have lost count how many have been employed through PESA in Cebu. But one thing for sure, our population has increased. We are now 5 million people, higher than the country of Norway. <laughs> Simply because, not because the Cebuanos are prolific, <laughs> but because of migration. Even beggars are migrating to Cebu. Cebu's business and economy is probably one of the most vibrant in the country, above ground as well as underground. <laughs> Our region prides itself as among the biggest contributors to the Philippine econ economy, especially in the area of tourism manufacturing and exports, business process outsourcing, as well as in higher education. Unfortunately, we are not getting our share of infrastructure investments to optimize the region's contribution towards the country's economic development, most especially in tourism. But it's nice to learn that Secretary Singson of the DPWH has approached the problem in DPWH through management changes as well as education. And uh, we wish, therefore, that the things or the changes in DPWH will bear fruit starting in 2013, as he promised. Statistics would tell us that more than 97% of the Philippine business, or even much higher than that, are in the SME category, and most of them are situated in the countryside including Cebu, of course. And I am emphasizing the statistics because these MEs are the businesses that are most challenged to be ethical in their dealings with customers, their suppliers, and even with their own people as to wages, as well as their dealings with the BIR, the Bureau of Customs, even such departments as the DNR, the DPWH, of course, and even the Department of Agriculture. I, serious, I seriously doubt if the ECC's initiative to significantly improve the financial reporting standards of businesses have affected these companies, considering the sheer size or sheer magnitude of the time that may be spent in reviewing their financial statements on a year-to-year -year basis. It's just recently that the SEC has promulgated accounting and financial reporting standards for the SMEs. Uh, it's just been uh, affected very recently. I also doubt the effectiveness of the supervision and management of the regional offices of the various departments I mentioned earlier, when the same people and old practices are still in place, most especially in the BIR and the Bureau of Customs. How can reforms initiated in the capital filter down effectively to the regional offices given the reality. Dr. Mangahas has uh, confirmed in his survey that this is existing in uh, 
especially and the, the, the areas that are affected are the SMEs. And based on my interviews, there are also doubts as to the ability of the regional heads of these departments to understand the needs of the businesses that they are serving, with the exception, of course, of the uh, PESA. So that these businesses can become more productive and world competitive. The perceptions of lack of business understanding extends even to the level of department heads in Manila. It is our wish that uh, the secretary, that, that what Secretary Singson has done in his organization of his department can be replicated in many other departments in government that deal with business. Now, for the purpose of this summit, I randomly selected three companies from the integrity signatories in Cebu, which are not really that many. And all the members, and all of them are members of the European Chamber. The first is a food processing company, a wholly owned American subsidiary that exports practically all its products but imports a good amount of its raw materials from Indonesia and Africa and the US. And some of the parts of their machinery and equipment are also imported. It is a registered enterprise under the Board of Investments. The second is a power producer co-owned by a locally publicly listed company and some foreign stockholders. The third one is a meat importer that boasts of importing and marketing locally 50 containers a month and could be increasing in business so fast since the local meat producers cannot fully cover the local demand. It is a 60% Filipino owned with 40% ownership shared by a European and an Asian partner. As all of them are signers of the integrity pledge, they are all committed to our team today, which is driving cultural change. One of them has an anti-corruption policy anchored in the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act of 1977 of the U.S. that demands compliance from all its directors, officers, employees, including its agents, consultants, and representatives. They have a corporate legal department that reviews all significant contracts and agreements, and most especially with governments. They prohibit bribery of any kind. They have a corporate ethics committee accessible even to the lowest employee that may report illegal and unethical practices. Their business transactions and their system of internal control is reviewed on a regular basis for compliance with the Sarbanes-Oxley law of the U.S. They are independently audited annually by one of the big four accounting firms in the world. Another of my sample Another of my sample companies reported that they have a written business ethics policy and that their desired goal on ethical business practices is even embedded in their mission and vision statements. Where ethical practices are quantifiable, these are included in their balanced scorecards. They have also a well-defined system of internal control where the more important ones are in their policy manual. They are also full compliant with the SEC mandated Philippine financial reporting standards for good corporate governance. The third one is working on strengthening their system of internal control to the point that they are about to make operational their ethics committee that would concretize their efforts towards establishing high ethical standards 
in their business practices, including their dealings with governmental agencies, especially the Bureau of Customs and the BIR. The major complaints of one of the three are the lack of understanding of some governmental agencies on the rules of free trade agreements and the tendency of the Bureau of Customs to press down the valuation of the imports, supposedly to help them for lesser duties and value-added tax. Well, this may appear to be to bring down their cost, they know that they will be hit by higher income tax later because they are reporting their true revenues. In conclusion, therefore, while designers of the integrity pledge are compliant with their pledges, or at the very least working towards being compliant to their integrity commitment, this anti-corruption initiative that ECCP started will be a long work in process until, number one, the reforms in the BIR and the Bureau of Customs can filter down to the regions through structural changes or changes of people, especially in the higher levels, I think. And number two, the heads of departments down to the heads of the regions must understand the needs of businesses or at the very least understand by go doing business in the Philippines must be made efficient and world competitive. Making processes of starting a business or renewing business licenses in the local governments complicated can breed corruption and can drive away investors. A corruption-free way of doing business will make us world competitive and would entice more foreign direct investors to do business in the Philippines and provide more employment and contribute to the prosperity of the country. Thank you for allowing me to share my thoughts. Thank you very much, Mr. Dapat. Now we hear from Ms. Marisa Segovia. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of my chairperson, Juan Jose Hamora III, the Board of Trustees and members of the Iluilo Business Club, I would like to thank the organizers of the Second Integrity Summit for inviting us to this very important event. When the Iluilo Business Club was offered to do a session on the Integ Integrity Initiative Project last March, we really did not know what to expect from the focus group discussion.